keeping my 589 and friends here. Um, we got Rob, we got my friend Ben here. What up? <laughs> Alright. So, uh, today is the uh, release. I'm a stuck. I'm shit. <laughs> today, uh, we're doing uh, the release of uh, Batman the Killing Joke. It's a one night showing. Um, I'm excited. I don't know how are you excited. I'm pumped. I'm actually seeing this for the first time as a non Batman fan. Oh, I'm not as big into the comic books as all my friends. I swear are, I'm so not a Batman fan. I'm only have a Joker me. shirt on. How about you? I'm probably about the biggest comic book nerd. Yeah, I, I think me and you both are actually. I think when we're in trailers, we talk a lot about Batman and stuff. Well, Dark Knight is arguably the quintessential super. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think even Superman comes close, but when you're talking about what is the role of a superhero, Batman is it. Yes. Indeed, it's very dark too in that one. Um, yeah, this is one of like the first R-rated anime. Oh, ones too. I was afraid that up too. Uh, it, it, it is the first. Yeah, it's the first and probably the only in a long time for R-rated, other than like uh, Deadpool. But um, what makes I me mean, more excited most of all, but just make this introduction short and simple, is Mark Hamill. You guys know who Mark Hamill is. Mark Hamill is the uh, actor who plays uh, Luke Skywalker. He played the Joker in uh, the animated series. Played the Joker in the Arkham series. And he finally came back to redo his uh, Joker in The Killing Joke. And he said he, he said he would only come back for that that one movie. And we're here. So uh, I'll make a short and simple, guys. We're gonna come in uh, with an out uh, with the review as soon as we get done with the movie. Uh, here we go. All right, guys. Uh, is, is the angle okay when uh, down there? <laughs> Big <It's> Don. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, we're good. Big Benoit 589 again. Uh, so we're doing a review of the Killing Joke. We got Ben over here. We got Tim. We just met at the theater. Um, what do you think of the video of the movie, Ben? I was. Uh, I'm a little conflicted by it, to be honest. Um, the art style was all right. I, I could live with the way they animated it. Music was certainly on par for what I'd expect. Voice acting, all that jazz. It just it, the comic will always be a certain type of throw for me, and I don't know that that movie hit it necessarily. I'm still storyline still getting right. I uh, no, I actually felt the same watching it. I actually like, felt bored at some points in a story that I felt like I shouldn't have. Yeah, because it's something that's like so unique. It's like it's yeah a standalone. It's an Alan Moore book. It's and, uh, very important for the Joker's uh, history. It's like, it, they, they hit it on many points too, but some of the points they couldn't hit off. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it felt like familiar, but... I gotta bring up the fact that that was R-rated. Definitely should, should not, not have, have been. been. For no reason. Yeah. There was no nudity, no, no swearing, no gore. Yeah, like, was, there was it was, nothing oh, oh this is this dark movie. No. It was a I, cartoon. I think, I think, did you guys see Bad Blood? Yeah, yes. I, I think that was darker. I, I think that was. I thought Dark Knight Returns was darker. <laughs> I thought I thought the, like, Under the Red Hood was darker than that one. I mean, that one that Jason no. Todd dying and beat with a hit with a freaking uh, was a crowbar. I think yeah. it was. Crowbar, crowbar. Yeah, beat in the death, Absolutely. and he's like, "Does this hurt? Does this hurt?" I'm like, oh. I'm like, yeah, that's that was beautiful. But I don't know. I, I think the only moment on that movie that kind of caught me off guard, but maybe felt so happy I saw, it was the Joker's speech. With that, the madness. The ma oh. Yeah, absolutely. If you ever melted in your seat from a movie, that's a part I melted in there. I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm done for the night. Oh, that's perfect. Um, and, I don't know, what, what was your take on, on Batgirl? I like the backstory, despite the fact that the backstory was not in the graphic novel. I think the backstory was needed for the movie. But I think that it was played out perfectly in the movie with the backstory. I, I disagree. I do. It feels like it was like a last-ditch effort, like, oh, we're making this movie. Oh, shit, there's not enough book. What do we do? Okay, yeah. I mean, they literally... Paris, France. Oh, Paris, France. Is probably the, the worst monster. name that I've ever like, heard in my life. Uh, but the big issue was it didn't add anything to Barbara as a character. I think it made her more of a victim, if anything. Yeah. And it, it made Batman look like an asshole. Really, like I, it felt like it didn't add enough to. That's not something that should have started the Killing Joke. That feels like one of the the one-off animated series. Having read a lot of the background comics to just kind of fill in certain gaps, 
it definitely lacked certain characteristics of what is Batgirl prior to her being paralyzed and becoming Oracle. Yeah. And what they put into this movie to fill those gaps did not come from the comics. It's yeah. ultimately stuff that they put in there that first makes her seem like a kid, and then when you realize she's going to own Batman, you're like, oh, <laughs> oh God, this is no, weird. No, no. Well, I, I kind of, I kind of went fifty-fifty. I, I, I like the backstory for some kind of new storyline to it. If it was it for the fact that we know the background of Batgirl, and that came in, we're like, oh, that's perfect, we like that. But because we know the background of Batgirl, it's just like, yeah. That's a little creepy and incestuous. Yes. <laughs> Especially, especially the fact when Batgirl's like on, uh, jumps onto Batman. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna bone you. See your Batwing. Like, oh, I don't want to. S- no, no, the, that was wrong. The one thing that made me feel a little better about this. So I did hear that that was a scene coming up. Right. And uh, thank you, CNN, for that spoiler. Exactly. So what, yeah. what freaked me out was like, well, what's the age difference? Because I oh, thought yes. Batman was significant. Oh, he is. Oh it, god, it's huge. Uh, well, no, no, I guess, alright, so if you go by animated series, they peg her at somewhere between 19 and 21, yep. and they have him somewhere between 25 and 30. So I guess on that spectrum, it's not. So here's the kicker. When Batgirl comes into the picture in the whole entire Batman franchise, yes, he is a younger Bruce Wayne, albeit there is an age difference in a couple of years, but you know, they're close enough that it's like, okay, it's not Hugh Hefner and his latest wife. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it's it's still one of those things uh, that you're kind of like, no, they're supposed to, like, Batman has a relationship with all of his cohorts that is, I'm the father figure, you are my child. Correct. Like, he's, he is the mentor to all these misguided children. Where is Robin in the mix in this one? I forget. And I, uh, dead on the top of the screen. <laughs> did you yeah, see? Yeah, did it, yeah, I get that. Did you see like the, the little like uh, cameo everything, like where Joker's sitting in a jail cell, like on the picture, this cameo for like Batman and Dark Knight. It was Ryan. a nice touch seeing some oh, of yeah. the pictures yeah. they included though, because yeah, they touched was... upon like some major story arcs. Oh yeah, that. exactly. That was a little the, moment of nostalgia. The, the was yeah. it, I think it's the, the man who laughs is another one that Joker's and it, especially so when he's death of the family. In yep. There. I'm like, oh god, it's beautiful. <laughs> So we got our opinions here. We got the person behind the camera here. Rob, what did you think of it? I actually thought it was a pretty good movie. You guys are just liars. <laughs> You've also never read the story, so. <laughs> it's true. So it, it all, it's all going to lead up to the next movie for uh, the next movie review we do. Um, whoever wants to join in, my friend wise, um, with uh, Buddy Jeff, maybe Ben, maybe um, maybe uh, Rob want to go, maybe Tim will see it too. We're going to see the Suicide Squad and review that one. And the only thing for that one that's going for me has to be Harley Quinn. And not that, again, not that I'm a Joker fan or a Harley Quinn fan. I'm just. I thought of Arno Robbie every day. I'm just. Uh, and twice I'm on just, Sunday. Yeah. I'm going to make one call now, right now, beforehand. I think this Robin, I know this Joker is Robin. I think it's a, a fallen out Robin. Because this Joker feels way too not like the Joker himself. It's very. Like he put the Joker on a pedestal, so he tattooed it, everything Joker yeah. had over his body. Kind of like he's wearing an outfit type thing. Almost. I don't know if you guys well, saw the uh, close-ups of the costume, yeah. and in that one shot where it's got him holding his head, yeah. he's got the two scar marks on his shoulders, right, in the same exact spots on the costume. Okay. And it's at Comic Con. They leave the statue of Jared Meadows, Joker, dressed in uh, Batman. Costume, like a legitimate oh, Batman costume <laughs> that he spray painted purple and green. Like, nice. Oh hey, God! I, yes, I'm calling it right now. That that Joker is a disgraced Robin. Now there is one more thing I say before we end the video here. The, I heard a, uh, a rumor mill going around that the new Batman movie directed by Ben Affleck is going to be based off the Arkham Asylum game itself and the series in the book itself. I so they're. Heard that. Yeah, it's a, it's just so brand new rumor, actually. They're, they're talking about doing a whole Arkham, uh, um, Arkham Asylum series in the Batman movie with Ben Affleck. That's so, hard, because it's going to be Justice League. It's supposed to be, but it's supposed to be, like, back before all this happened in Justice League. The only so, thing that makes that sound plausible, as I said, we're getting a whole rogue gallery. Like, we're, yeah. getting, we're getting a taste of everyone, and the only thing that makes sense is if he goes to Arkham. And it's, yeah. like, little cameos here and there. So, um... Overall, before uh, we can give it, uh, I give you to give it one out of five, or, or like not one out of five, one be- one between five or movie. What would you give it for rating for yourself? It's conflicting. If comparing it to the comic book, I gotta give it like 
three and a half, close four. Um, movie itself, solid. About the four mark again. So it's comic book wise, yes, it follows some of the stuff in there, stuff added in, but like I said, just didn't have that thrill. Yeah. I would, uh, I give it a solid three out of five. Um, on, only reason being, I felt like some of the things they added was, hey, we're making this movie. Oh shit, there's not enough. We have to throw this in. And it, I feel like it took away from the overall story that I love. So that's just me. As someone who's grown up loving this comic, loving this character, mm -hmm. it felt not rushed, but just thrown together. I, I would agree with this. Maybe three out of five overall. I mean, but if you're not a Batman fan coming to this movie, you're probably going to get that higher rating because you never seen Batman quite that. You're probably going to get four out of five. So overall, between not Batman fan and Batman fan, three out of five. So okay. tell us, Rob, how does Bruce Wayne's dick taste? <laughs> About a four out of five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's been Big Benoit 589. We got Ben over here. We got Tim, Rob. Um, these guys want the social media into the uh, the link. I'll put it in there. They'll tell me after the camera. Um, follow them if it's in there. Um, like, follow, subscribe. Thumbs up, thumbs down, and uh, signing off. Ba -da 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 -da. Uh